Today we are going to use IOD molds to get amazing dimension in your cookies. And then we're going to use some fun artistic icing techniques. Okay, the first step we're going to do is we are going to use cornstarch and be pretty generous and dust our cavities. And this will help your dough to release. We've got a disc of chilled dough ready to go. The trick with your cornstarch is you want to be liberal with this technique, but you don't want any big clumps of it um, destroying your detail. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just kind of go like that, so I don't want any big chunks, but I want it to be the coverage. Yeah, the good coverage. Okay, I think Would that's good. Would it be good. too much to actually bump it on the table? Yeah, that because would take off too much. it would take off too much. That's actually what I do if I don't, if I'm not as concerned about it sticking. Okay. Okay, so let's, Sal, so show us how to get these filled up and... Mm -hmm. So it's actually not too different than when you're working with our air dry clay. <laughs> you just break off a chunk. So with cookie dough, when you're casting, you want to work it up to the edge and avoid having a ton of excess because you're just going to need to remove that. The thing with cookie dough is when you go to bake it and then you demold it, if you've got that flange on the edge, it's not as easy to remove as like when you're working with air dry clay and you don't want to risk breaking your cookie when you're trimming those things off. So take care of, it's kind of like in photography, everything you can do in the shot is better than going back in to fix it later. Yeah. Okay, so this one is gonna be a little trickier. Do you think that's too much? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you read my mind. Okay. I well, I only because I totally find myself all the time saying, Oh, that's that more was than I had. That more than I needed. Oh, and also, important note. This recipe is one that really holds the structure and it doesn't uh, spread. So the recipe is very important to retaining that detail. And we have included a link to the recipe in the description below. How am I looking over here? It's looking great. Okay, we've got these filled. Thank you, Sally, you did awesome. And we are going to just put a little piece of parchment paper on it and do a little bit of roller pin so that it really pushes it into the dimension and gives us a little bit of level. What this will also do is if you have a lot of excess in one spot, it's going to press that out so you can get rid of it. So just a gentle roll? Yeah, just a gentle roll. We're actually not trying to push it down to the micro rim. All right. If you find there's a little excess after you've rolled it, just get a little tool and trim it. This is fabulous. Now we're gonna set these in the freezer to get really nice and chill. Not totally frozen, so I would say mm -hmm. about 15 to 20 minutes. You'll wanna give it a try when you bring it out. Okay, we've got them out of the freezer. They're nice and cold and mm -hmm. nice and firm. And you're gonna wanna be gentle as you do this and just kind of crack your edges. There's a seal and you'll see it cracking and then gently bending the mold, not bending the casting. And then gently, if it's, if it's resisting in a spot, don't force it. Just wait and come back to it. You'll notice we actually use trimmings too as well. We're gonna do something fun with these later as well. Yes. Now, especially being careful with this one because it's got lots of turns and curves. Sometimes, like right now, you might need to set it down and support it to avoid damage. 
Is there a certain time limit to which you want to get these done quickly? Like you don't want the dough to get warm. Yeah, you just, um, it's going to get soft as it, if it gets warm. Okay. Now there's a little piece there. Quickly but carefully. Quickly but carefully. Okay. It's not difficult though. I mean, honestly, these ones are coming out like a dream. Now notice that there's a little piece here that broke. The nice thing about dough is you can just kind of squish it onto there. And when it cooks, it'll be pretty good fused to it. Okay. I'm just going to move over here. Oops, I'm sorry. Well, would you look at that? They're just <laughs> falling out. Beautiful. Oh, now is a good so time pretty. to carefully remove Look at these, you guys. any excess. All of that detail. Now this one has a little bit of the cornstarch. That'll just bake off, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. This detail is amazing. Now, I am going to use two different batches to bake these. And the reason is they are, with this technique, you want to um, compensate for the varied thicknesses. And when you're going for as much dimension as we are, you're going to have a lot of varied thicknesses. So, for example, there's pieces like this one are considerably thinner than these ones, as with these ones. So you're gonna kind of divide up the smaller, thinner pieces and leave the, and thick, leave pieces. the thick pieces. Yeah. Another thing you're going to do when you are cooking for this much dimension or baking for this much dimension is you're going to adjust your baking temperature and time. Mm -hmm. You're going to reduce your temperature by 25 degrees for this recipe in particular and increase the time. So we're targeting about 325 for about 20 minutes. All right, let's put these babies in the oven. We have pulled these out of the oven, allowed them to cool. Completely cool. Completely cool. And now we are going to have some frosting fun. Yes. Josie's going to kick us off with some royal icing. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've taken some homemade royal icing and we've diluted that down so that it's nice and, glazy. and glazy because we want to put a thin coating on the cookie. That's translucent. That's translucent. So. Let's take this here. Look at that. If you fabulous. want yours to be more opaque, you can put a drop of white food coloring in yes. it. Yes. Now, let's take a quick look at the beautiful dimension here. And I keep can't it... believe how much dimension. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting you. How does it feel? As I can't if. believe how much dimension these cookies have. Yeah, they're, they're so beautiful. Fabulous. So I'm going to go on heavy and then spread that around and I'm not going to allow too much to settle into the low spots because that's what will kind of diminish our dimension. Okay. It's really Do you have pretty... to be careful how much you work the to where not the really. will get soggy or anything like that? No. Okay. It doesn't soak in. It's nice. Very forgiving. It's easy, but you can see it is translucent. Mm -hmm. It gives you kind of a cloudy coating. I think it's beautiful. I do too. I actually like the natural look, look of the cookie showing through that mm -hmm. warmth. And you can have a lot of fun with this and you can tint your icings. You can take a little bit of it and put it on a little uh, palette mm -hmm. with different colors and get in there mm -hmm. and have That's fun just have so much fun with it. That's where the art comes into sugar arts. <laughs> exactly. Mm, so lovely. That is really pretty. Yes. So what are you going to do, Sal? 
I am going to take, I've been so excited about this idea that the trimmings to mold makes the most beautiful stick cookies or cookie sticks. Mm -hmm. And I thought how fun would it be to just dip those into some candy melts and then into some candy cane. So I'm going to do that. Love it. And I'm just going to make sure I get a nice deep dip there. Okay, it's nice and thick. And then I'm just gonna roll it into some candy cane. Lightly and gently. Yeah, you kind of pat it in. Just okay. Set that aside. I think I'm going to use a little bit less of the white chocolate. Let some of it drip off because I noticed that got a little bit heavy and a little bit clunky. So I'm going to be a little thinner on my next coat. Can I use a little of this too? Sure. Okay. You know what, maybe you've got something there. I'm gonna actually sprinkle it on and then pat it in. I like it. Mm -hmm. This is fun. All right, just a couple more. Can you guys picture these cookie sticks wrapped up in some pretty cellophane for a special person mm -hmm. on your gift list? Also, really fun idea Josie and I had. People may already be doing this, but we haven't heard of it. And that is to have a cookie bar. So you do the cookie sticks and then you have some different dips like caramel, raspberry jam. Um, Molten chocolate, mm -hmm. like fondue. Like fondue pots and have a, like a little cookie dipping station. A little bit of the royal icing glaze adds a delicate crunch. To, I mean, the cookies are already a nice crunchy, depending on how long you bake them, but it adds that just extra layer of yeah. candy, candy crunch. They really are. They're delicious. Yeah. Mm, okay. So pretty. All right, you guys. Thanks for hanging in there with us with our silliness. Um, we get a little bit crazy. <laughs> We had so much fun, and I hope you guys got some great ideas for some things that you can do. <laughs> we need to cut this out before it goes and gets any worse. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you.